When we ask our children to say sorry, we ask them to be incongruent and unauthentic. What we're saying is, hold back your frustrations, dismiss how you feel, suppress your sadness. You don't matter. What matters is that you meet the external expectations of a society that says, because you did that, you should say sorry. But here's what happens. If the child chooses to say sorry, they get a get out of jail free card. They can go, oh, sorry. And we know they didn't mean it. And the other person does not feel like that person had any remorse to them for what they did. So it actually doesn't help anyone in the situation. And it teaches your child that you don't matter. What matters is that you do what society says you should do. But here's the thing, quite often when we're asking our child to say sorry, something has happened that has caused an emotional reaction in them. They've then become triggered and reacted to somebody else. And maybe they have overreacted, maybe they've hurt that person, maybe they didn't make all the best choice. But essentially, that reaction came from something they were feeling in the first place. So when we see them as nothing other but the perpetrator and we want them to apologize to the victim, we completely dismiss and, and, and don't acknowledge the fact that, hang on, I was hurt first, why don't my feelings matter? What I hit her, yeah, maybe I shouldn't have hit her, but she called me a name and that really hurt my feelings. And so when that triggered me, I claimed back the power she took from me by hitting her, but what, so if it matters that I hit her, why doesn't it matter that she hurt my feelings? So we want our children to feel like they do matter and there's no such thing as a negative and positive emotion. All emotions are valid and all emotions are equal. So instead of asking your child to say sorry, give them the red light, green light. Hitting is not okay. I can see that you're angry. Tell her how angry you are, how much that hurt you, and that you're not gonna play with her anymore. You are welcome to use all of your words, but I don't like you using your hands. So that's just one example. Now here's, you gotta think about it. The point of this whole scenario is we want our child to be sorry. Why, what does being sorry even mean? It means if I'm genuinely sorry, if I truly have reflected on the choice I made and I can see, I have a bit of regret, I wish I hadn't done something different, what happens is I get to internalize that, I get to work out who I am, what I align with and what I don't, and it creates such a shift in me because of the emotion I experience as I reflect on it, that I want to be sorry, I am sorry. I'm not saying sorry, I am sorry. I do have remorse for what I've done and I wanna reconnect with the person that I might have just hurt. So the whole point of being sorry is that the behavior never happens again. If you're truly sorry for something, you stop that behavior, you become more aware of that. But if you have allowed your child to skip the whole process and just say the word sorry, they haven't even had to internalize or reflect on any choice they made, how that affected anyone else. It doesn't build any kind of empathy or compassion and allow them to decide, who am I? How am I gonna behave in a situation like that? Yes, I don't like it when I get my feelings hurt, but I really don't wanna hurt my sister the way that I did. I really don't wanna you know, throw trucks at my brother and hit him in the head with it or something, which is what our kids do. So let's encourage our children to be sorry, not say sorry. And here's one of the first ways you can do it by you being sorry to them. And so what you do is you use the language, I learn and I intend. So let's say your child comes home and uh, they get ready, they've got to go to sport and you've just made a cake or something. And they go to training and then they come home and there's no cake left and they're angry at you and they're feeling it's not fair and how come everyone else got cake? Why did someone leave some for me? What you do is you apologize, you say, I'm sorry. I learned that you feel left out when I don't keep cake for you. So next time I intend to make sure I put some aside. Or it could be that they're upset with you because they got in trouble for something last week and now you're not telling off you know, their sister or their brother for doing the exact same thing right now. So how come it's okay for them and it's not okay for me? And in that moment, you need to apologize. You say, I'm sorry, I learned that sometimes I'm not consistent with the way that I parent and I can see how that looks to you. I intend to be more aware of myself and make sure I do things consistently from now on. So I learned and I intend. When you use that language with your child, that will encourage them to feel safe being vulnerable and using that same language. When you go off your head at them because you've had a bad day and you really shouldn't have gone off that much and you really are sorry, go to them and say, listen, I'm really sorry about the way I handled things today. 
Like that is so out of alignment for me. It's not the kind of parent I wanna be at all. And I understand how that would have left you feeling. So I learned today that when I've had a big heavy day, I have no space left in me for someone else and that I take that out on you guys. So from now on, I intend to sit with myself and clear my head before I come home. Or I intend to be more aware of how I might be taking that out on you guys. And I just wanted to say I'm sorry right now. So when they get to experience on the other end what it feels like when someone is sorry, that becomes the gift that they want to offer someone else when they are genuinely sorry. But we as parents have to give them room to be sorry first. And we can't expect them to be sorry in the moment where they're angry and they've just been hurt themselves and they've retaliated to something. That's not the time to ask them to be sorry. Allow space and have the conversation tonight. It's never too late. Second thing is this. Children have different I'm sorry languages. And so we don't want to get so, you know, caught up in the words I'm sorry. For example, your child's love language translates to their I'm sorry language. The words of affirmation child, will fi they'll find it easier to come and say I'm sorry. Or they'll write it down because their connection with love and connection is all around words. The touch child won't want to say I'm sorry but they'll want to come and give you a hug. You know, the active service child will just want to let it be swept under the rug, but they'll show you they're sorry. They'll come and unpack the dishwasher. They'll come and help you out. Or they might help their sister or their brother. They'll go and help pack up toys or something like that. The gifts child will make something for you, or they'll make a nice little card, or they'll offer their brother or sister or their friend a little gift that means something to them that they say, I'm gonna give this to you. They might not say sorry, but they're showing that they are sorry. So we wanna make sure that we, that we see this and we notice it, and we say, I can see you were sorry. And I know it takes courage to be sorry and to own something that we've done. Uh, the, uh, the last love language is quality time. The quality time child will go and say, go and ask the brother and sister, would you like to play a game? And they'll normally suggest a game they know they like playing because bringing us back together, having quality time is how I express love. And when I'm sorry, I want to express my love and I want to connect with the person that I realize I've hurt. So understand your kids' I'm sorry language and get rid of this programming of say sorry, say sorry, sorry. No, don't say sorry, learn how to be sorry. And as parents, we're responsible for creating that space and teaching our children how to do that. My name is Holly Noonan, I'm from The Holly Effect. Stay amazing, stay conscious, and please leave a comment down below. What was your biggest takeaway from this message?